Hello and welcome to the video. Today we're at Guila Villiast. But first, welcome back to our channel, Coral Jacks, where we visit ancient sites and delve into the history and folklore behind them. A lot of these sites are fairly unknown, and we'd love more people to be aware of these awe-inspiring remnants of history, as well as keep some of our precious and dwindling folklore alive. Please subscribe to our channel to help support us in this goal. Oh my god! We've hit a spot where there's two options. All right, so that one goes down to the water and crosses over and goes up the other side where we would have met up with. All right. So yeah, I think we just carry on a little bit. So it should be up to here on our left. Today, we'll be exploring another ancient site in Wales near the Preseli Hills. This prehistoric monument sits below the village of Clandidwin in Carmarthenshire. Situated on an ancient path in a secluded forest, its huge capstone points towards the nearby River Taff, which you can hear flowing below the trees. Not to be confused with the river of the same name that flows through Cardiff. The site is commonly referred to as Gwalafiliast, translating to the lair of the greyhound bitch. Today, a thick forest surrounds the Cromlech, but according to old sources, the site used to be clear of trees and you would have views of the Preselis. Nobody really knows how old these monuments are, or what their original purpose was. In Wales, we call them the Cromlech, but around the world they are often called portal dolmens, or simply dolmens. A portal dolmen is defined as a Neolithic structure consisting of a large flat stone supported horizontally on two or more upright stones. They are considered among the oldest megalithic structures in Europe, if not the world, and there are examples of similar structures all over the globe. Gualafiliast, for the lair of the greyhound bitch. You may have heard this name before, because as is tradition here in Wales, several other cromlechs share the same name. In a book from 1815, a topographical and historical description of Wales, Reverend T. Rees refers to it as Hlecophiliast and states that it has been conjectured that it derived from the circumstances of the early Christians evincing their contempt for these vestiges of pagan worship by converting them into kennels for their dogs. An old Welsh tale set during the days of King Arthur tells of Coridwin and Talisin. Welsh poetry refers to the goddess of transformation, rebirth and inspiration, Coridwin, as possessing the cauldron of poetic inspiration called Awen. This legendary story tells that Coridwin set to brew in her magic cauldron a mixture that would grant the gift of wisdom and poetic inspiration, Awen, for her son Morfran. The mixture was to be boiled for a year and a day, one day, when the brew was almost finished, her young servant, Gwion Bach, was stirring the concoction, and three drops of the liquid splashed onto his thumb. He instinctively put his thumb in his mouth and gained the wisdom and knowledge that Coridwin had intended for her son. In his fear of Coridwin's anger, Gwion fled, with Coridwin chasing after him. With his new powers, he turned himself into a hare, and she transformed herself into a greyhound. The story continues with Gwion turning into a fish and jumping into the river, she an otter. Gwion turning into a bird, she a hawk. He eventually turns himself into a grain of corn, and Coridwin, as a hen, eats him. Due to the power of the potion, he was not destroyed. Coridwin became pregnant, and she knew it was Gwion. She resolved to kill the child when it was born. However, when he was born, he was so beautiful that she could not do it. She threw him in the ocean instead. The child did not die, but was rescued on a Welsh shore by a prince, and the newborn infant grew to become the legendary bard, Talisin. 
In Folklore and Folk Stories of Wales, 1909, Mary Trevelyan argued that these megalithic monuments were named in Caridwin's honour as a canine symbol. Others have speculated that Gwalafiliast itself is the site where Caridwin transforms into the Greyhound in a pursuit of Gwion. However, it has been argued that the translation of Gwalafiliast doesn't necessarily mean Greyhound as in the breed of dog. It could mean a hound that is grey as a reference to a wolf. There is another legendary Welsh tale, Cullwch and Olwen, which connects Arthur and a she-wolf. We'll put a link below to a website that has a great argument for Gwalafiliast being on the route of the legendary boar hunt of Tuk Turt that takes place in the Cullwch and Olwen story. The site has another couple of loose connections. A quote from the Book of British Goblins by Wirt Sykes says that under a cromlick at Dol Willem, on the banks of the Tau, and in the stream itself when the water is high, there is a circular hole of considerable depth, accurately bored in the stone by the action of the water. This hole is called Arthur's Pot, and according to local belief was made by Merlin for the hero King Arthur to cook his dinner. And the site is also known as Burd Arthur, which translates as Arthur's Table. Again, lots of these structures share this name. It's thought to be a reference to Arthur and the Round Table, which in and of itself is a whole other topic to explore, but it could be confused with the periodical gatherings of bards, which were also called Round Tables. And so, we'll continue to research this site as we work towards long-form video that will go deeper into how these sites in Wales are connected to each other and what we can learn from the study of these types of structures worldwide. Please leave a comment if you have anywhere you'd like us to look at next, or to share your thoughts on what these sites were used for. I hope you join us soon for another video. Have a good one.